Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm continuing today uh, to work through the Bible study in Ephesians 5. Um, and we had gotten, when Dion was with me, Dion was with me, we had gotten through to verse 10, I believe. So I'm going to start with verse 11 and try to work through the end of the chapter um, just today. Beginning with verse 11, and having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as the Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the, savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might uh, present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no mo for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall join, be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is the great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Well, beginning with the 11th verse, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Well, our first responsibility is not to participate in... Um, any of the unfruitful works of darkness ourselves, you know. And so if we go to 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9 through 11, and we read, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not all together with the fornicators of this world or with the covetousness covetous or adult extortioners or with adulterers, idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, even such as and one know not to eat, with such and one know not to eat. And then he says in verse 13, But them that are without God judge it. Therefore put away from among you yourselves that wicked person. It's not always easy to follow that. You know. And what is a person who falls into that category? You know. Um.
fornicators, covetous, extortioners, idolaters, drunkards, um, railers, such and one know not to eat. <clears throat> I had an experience with the person that I had uh, he had called me on Sermon Audio a number of years ago and we had a relationship for over the phone and I began to observe that he had been drinking and he was slurring his words and he had a real problem with alcohol I think the good Lord um, delivered him from that I I believe, I I hope that's the case, but he really had a problem with that for some time. On over in the 10th chapter um, of uh, 1 Corinthians, we're going to look at that for a minute here, the 10th chapter. Um... And we're going to be looking at around the 20th verse there. He says, um, But I say that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. So this is another admonition by Paul regarding who we are to fellowship with and who we are not to fellowship with. And of course it always behooves us to follow what we're commanding everybody else to do. To do. 2 Corinthians, uh, the 6th chapter, we read... Um, 2 Corinthians 6 um, says, Be 6.14 Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So there's a number of verses there that um, talk about this problem with fellowshipping with people that are involved in these kind of things. In verse 3, he says, but fornic- of this fifth chapter of visions, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Well, we look on down, he says in verse 13, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. I want to look at a passage in Hebrews. Um, the fourth chapter of Hebrews. And we read the following. Hebrews 4. Um, the 13th verse says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. 
but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, this 14th verse, he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians 14, 5.14 You know, Awake thou that sleepest. I want to look at a passage in Isaiah. Um, in Isaiah, the... Uh, 60th chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 60, and we read in verse 1 of the 60th chapter of Isaiah, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. So Jesus Christ describes himself as being the light of the world. And we are told that he would be a light unto the Gentiles. And I want to look at a passage in Romans 13th chapter real quickly well I don't know about how quickly but Romans 13 verses 12 11 and 12 um, we read and that knowing the time that now is it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now, in verse 15 of the fifth chapter of Ephesians, he says, <clears throat> Seeing then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as redeeming the time. Well, we read, I want to look at a passage in Colossians 4 and 5. Uh, here, Colossians 4 and 5. We read, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So the idea is that um, we should we should spend our time wisely. That's why I'm doing this uh, Bible study this afternoon. I don't know how long I have left to do Bible studies, you know. And um, he says in verse 17, Wherefore, I, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the what the will of the Lord is. What the will of the Lord is. Well, we know one of the things that the will of the Lord is is that we would redeem the time. Because the days are evil, right? And um, in the 12th chapter of Romans, we read in verse 2 of Romans 12, 
be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? And so, we're not to be conformed to this world. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In the um, Colossians, the fourth chapter, you know, we read the, that uh, Colossians 4, he says, Let your sp- walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. And verse 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Okay. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. It doesn't say, do not drink wine. It doesn't say that. It says, be ye not drunk with wine, wherein is excess but filled with the Spirit. Now, some people uh, have a propensity towards drunkenness. Some people cannot take very much alcohol at all before it starts affecting their judgment and their ability to think clearly. Um... In Proverbs, the 20th chapter, um, we are told um, let me see if I can get to the right chapter here. Proverbs, 20th chapter. He says, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Some people, I've heard people say, oh, just, you know, I I drink beer or I drink wine or I drink alcohol. It just takes the edge off. (laughs) They'll say, it just takes the edge off. Well, um, oftentimes people are deceived and are not wise if they take to take, drinking a lot of alcohol and so on, you know, and um, so we're, we're uh, admonished uh, not to participate in those things that might, in fact, have an impact upon us, and one of them is over-drinking, right? Um, I've often said in verse um, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to God, we're admonished to do that in several places, to praise God. All through the psalms, the psalmist is praising God. And... um, it never ceases to amaze me how um, sometimes people just refuse to to praise God in in singing or in with their lips, you know. Uh, and a lot of times they'll use the excuse, "Well, I'm not a very good singer, and I can't carry a tune." Look, God looks upon the heart, not upon your ability to to sing well. You know? In Acts, the 16th chapter, we read um, the account of Paul and Silas praying and singing praises unto God when they were in prison. And not only did God hear them, but the prisoners heard them. What was the result of their giving praise to God? Suddenly there was a great earthquake. 
The foundation of the prison was shaking, and immediately all the doors were open. Everyone's bands were loosed, right? If you want to get out of the out of bondage, if you want to get out of the depressed state that you're in, start praising God. Start singing. Start giving Him praise. Uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians. Chapter 14, we read that uh, in the 26th verse there, he says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. That's one of the other advantages of praising God is it's edifying to other people. You might say, well, my singing wouldn't be too edifying to other people. Well, you might be surprised how much it would be edifying to other people if you would praise God in song. And um, if we look in the third chapter of Colossians, it's very similar to the admonition here, the third chapter of Colossians tells us in the uh, 16th verse, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. So the idea here is giving thanks. Verse 20 of Ephesians 5. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I think I'm going to stop there for today. It's a good stopping point. Um, We'll continue this next Tuesday. Um, We'll begin next Tuesday. Um, in um, verse 23, 21, verse 21, we made it through 10 verses today. Uh, I don't want to make it too lengthy where people can't follow along. So may the good Lord be with you. We've covered today uh, Ephesians 5, 11 through 20. And next time we'll, we'll try to get a little further along in our study. God bless.